Hello friends, so here we are with the lecture number 4 of uh, advanced thermodynamics. You may recall that in the previous class we actually defined uh, the generalized coordinate which basically is uh, characterizing variable which is the independent variable that is characteristic of a particular kind of interaction. So we took examples of the spring system and we said that the length of the spring is an example of the generalized coordinate for the interaction of stretching. And similarly, in the example of uh, battery capacitor system, we said that the uh, charge that is contained in either the battery or the capacitor is the generalized coordinate for the electrical interaction. And the corresponding um, cause for the change in the generalized coordinate would be called the generalized force. So, in the case of the spring interaction, the change in um, the length of the spring is caused by the spring force. So, the spring force becomes the generalized force and similarly in the case of uh, the electrical interaction, the interaction um, happens or the change in uh, generalized coordinate, the change in the charge happens because of the difference in voltage uh, and therefore, the voltage becomes the generalized force for the electrical interaction. Now, we were also looking at uh, the formalism of uh, defining a generalized force. So, we will look at that a little bit more in detail in uh, this class. So, let us go back to the PowerPoint presentation that we were uh, looking at. So, we said that uh, the cause for the change in generalized coordinate during an interaction is the corresponding generalized force. So, in the example of the spring-spring interaction, the if dx prime we call it dx1 is a change in length of one spring and dx double prime we call it as dx2 is that of the other. Uh, three conditions are possible that is something that we discussed also before that uh, dx prime is positive and dx double prime is negative and this happens when f prime that is f1 is less than f double prime the external force f2 which is exerted by the spring 2 on spring 1 and uh, similarly dx prime is less than 0 and dx prime greater than 0 when f prime is greater than f double prime. We wrote this in the opposite uh, order. And uh, when the two forces are equal to each other, f prime is equal to f double prime, then there is no change in the length of either spring 1 or spring 2. So, dx prime is 0 and dx double prime is 0. Okay, so, this we uh, use for defining the generalized force. So, if I look at these expressions closely. When I write it for a stretched string, that, that is the string whose natural length is something and you have extended it beyond the natural length. So, its elastic forces are trying to pull to shorten the length. right? So, this is the characteristic of a stretched spring. We can dis discuss a compressed spring and a cylinder piston system a little later which have a similar characteristic where if the spring for example is compressed from its natural length, then the spring force will try to restore it to the original length and therefore will push outwards. Okay. So, that is a compressed spring. So, in the case of a stretched spring, we found that the if I write dx prime which is the change in generalized coordinate for spring number 1 or the object number 1 in the left expression. The second expression can also be ignored the way we uh, wrote in the uh, previous classes. So, you just say dx prime is greater than 0, less than 0 or equal to 0. Correspondingly, you find when you write the inequality between f prime and f double prime, f prime is the force that is internal to object 1 and that you write it on the left hand side of the inequality or equality and the external you write it on the right hand side. So, if I look at object number 1 which is spring number 1 its length increases, decreases or remains constant that comes in um, these things and the corresponding cause is here f prime less than f double prime, f prime greater than f double prime, f prime equal to f double prime. You should not write the f double prime on this side, it should be f prime here and similarly here dx prime is written. So, then you find that these two inequalities are opposite to each other. Okay. This is less, then this is greater this is greater than this is less. So, this 
we use to define the sign of uh, the generalized force. So if the inequalities are like this, then the sign of the generalized force is positive. So F prime is the generalized force corresponding to X prime as the generalized coordinate. So that is the uh, convention that we will uh, try to use. So I will go back to the examples and uh, show you uh, how this is uh, significant. So let us go to the whiteboard and I will explain that to you. Okay. So here, so let us take the spring example itself. So this is spring number 1. Okay. And let us forget about spring number 2 at the moment. We will call it as an external force. Okay. So the F1, the internal force of this is in this direction. In that example, this was called as F prime, either way it is a notation. Uh, we will keep the same notation as uh, what is uh, there in the PowerPoint presentation so that there is uh, no confusion. So let me uh, call this as F prime. So this is F prime. And let us say the external force which is trying to pull the spring is F double prime. Okay. And we call the length of the spring at any given instant as X prime. Then we said that dx prime is less than 0 if F prime is greater than F double prime. So if the internal force of the spring exceeds the external force, then it succeeds in pulling the spring back. So the length of the spring decreases, dx prime is less than 0. And dx prime is greater than 0 when F prime is less than F double prime. When the external force is greater, then the spring F prime goes longer and therefore dx prime is positive. And dx prime is equal to 0 when F prime is equal to F double prime. So this is the relationship. So in this you notice that when this is less and this is greater. So these two have opposite signs. Then we say F prime is the generalized force and X prime is the generalized coordinate. So in this case, X prime is nothing but the length, which is a positive quantity. Okay, so X prime is the generalized coordinate, the length of the spring is a generalized coordinate and for a stretched spring we will find that F prime which is the restoring force, the internal force is the generalized force. So there are two, three things that we will need to uh, notice and uh, keep in mind here. When we call a generalized force and generalized coordinate, they both are properties of the object. In this case, F double prime is an external force. Okay. So it is not a property of this object. It is a force that is externally applied on this either by another object's internal force or by any other means. So this F double prime is not a property of, let us say this is object 1. So F double prime is not a property of 1. What we are considering now as generalized force has to be a property of 1 which is the internal restoring force which could be a function of the spring constant of the spring and its uh, uh, stretching from the natural length. So it can be called as what is whatever you call kdx or whatever. So this f prime which is now directed to shorten the spring. So f prime in this direction is the generalized force and x prime is the generalized coordinate. Okay. Now let us take a completely different example. Let us take the example of a cylinder piston system. Okay. So suppose I have a cylinder okay, and this is the piston that goes inside it. Okay. So now suppose let us uh, say the pressure inside this is P1. This is object 1. Okay. So the pressure inside this is P1. Okay. And the volume that is enclosed inside this, let us call it as V1. I write the volume with a V with a cross on top of it. So, to, so as to distinguish it from for the voltage that we wrote earlier or the velocity that might come in some other expression in the future, we normally try to write this 
capital V with a cross in order to represent uh, volume. So, now let us uh, uh, consider an external pressure which is pushing the piston from outside. Okay. Now, you can look at uh, what happens this when does BV1 become greater than 0 that is when does the volume increase the volume increases when P1 exceeds P external so P1 is greater than P external okay similarly BV1 dv1 is less than 0 when p1 is less than p external and dv1 is equal to 0 when p1 equal to p external right now observe this what happens this is also greater and this is also greater this is also less and this is also less and therefore p1 is not the generalized force there needs to be some adjustment that needs to be done. So, what do we do? We write these expressions with a minus sign. So, let us see what happens when we write it with a minus sign. So, if P1 is greater than P external, then what happens to minus P1? If I multiply the whole uh, inequality by minus 1, the inequality will get reversed. Minus P1 is less than minus P external and then the dv1 is greater than 0. So, the first expression if I rewrite with the, uh, this one multiplied by minus 1, then I get dv1 is greater than 0 when minus p1 is less than minus p external. Now, this inequalities are opposite to each other. Now, you see that the notation that we used in the previous uh, slide, when this is negative this is less than this is greater than and when this is greater than this is less than so the inequalities are opposite to each other then the f prime which is on the left hand side of this is the generalized force now with that we will find that minus p1 is the generalized force corresponding to this interaction is that clear so the notation that we use or the convention that we use is corresponding to what we used in a stretch spring and with that what we find is that if I apply the uh, convention to uh, cylinder piston system, we have to you can reverse the signs of this in order to get the convention with these two inequalities being opposite of each other and therefore, what you get is that minus P1 is the generalized force corresponding to the generalized coordinate V1. Okay. So, if you uh, rewrite uh, these expressions, so let me uh, try to do that. Let me erase uh, these and uh, rewrite it with respect to the minus p external. Then what I get is minus p1 is less than minus p external. In this case, minus p1 is greater than minus p external. And in this one, minus p1 equal to minus p external. Okay. So, this then defines minus P1 to be the generalized force corresponding to V1 as the generalized coordinate. So, generalized force in this case is minus P1 and generalized coordinate is V1. Is that clear? We can do another example or another uh, illustration. Now, with respect to a compressed spring. Okay. We did this exercise for a stretched spring in the first example. Now, let us look at it a compressed spring. So, suppose this is my uh, uh, fixed surface where the spring is. Okay. Now, I have an external force F double prime that is compressing the spring. Okay. So, the spring has gone to a length which is shorter than its uh, uh, original length and therefore, the internal force F prime will try to stretch the spring out. So, F prime will be in this direction. So, let us this is a compressed spring. Okay. So, two slides back 
we had what is called a stretched spring where the external force is trying to pull it out and the internal force is trying to restore it to its original length by pulling it backwards okay so that is a stretched spring so in the compressed spring the pressure the force directions are opposite so the f double prime is trying to push it in and f prime is trying to push it out so if i call the length of the spring as x prime then what does uh, the inequality do dx prime is greater than 0 when is that uh, greater than 0 when f prime exceeds f double prime so if when the uh, push uh, the uh, internal force is able to push the external force out then you get f prime greater than f double prime then the spring length will increase and dx prime is less than 0 when f prime is less than f double prime and dx prime is equal to 0 when f prime is equal to f double prime now what happened again you found that the uh, signs here the, the inequalities here are the same so f prime therefore cannot be the generalized force you need to multiply the uh, right hand side multiply the uh, force inequalities with a minus sign so that you get the modified thing so I'll write that here uh, minus f prime is less than minus f double prime okay similarly I can erase all of these and write them all over again so what happens minus f prime is less than minus f double prime which basically is synonymous with f prime greater than f double prime here minus f prime is greater than minus f double prime and here minus f prime is equal to minus f double prime ok so then now these two inequalities are opposite to each other and therefore you get minus f prime is the generalized force so minus f prime is the generalized force and x prime is the generalized coordinate now what is minus f prime if this is f prime then minus f prime is the same force with the opposite direction right so then this is consistent with the first example that you took what did you do in the first example in the first example you took f prime in this direction and f prime in that direction is the generalized force for a stretch spring and here in this example you have taken f prime in this direction so you it turned out that minus f prime is a generalized force but minus f prime is a force which is in the same direction as in the first case so if you take the generalized force to be that force that tries to pull the spring back whether it is a stretch spring or a compressed spring that becomes a generalized force so irrespective of whether the spring is stretched or compressed minus f prime will remain as the sorry the f prime in the direction which tries to re de reduce x prime will remain as the generalized force right so in this case it becomes a minus sign because we took the f prime in uh, the opposite direction so it corrects you that even if you took it that way it has to come back in this fashion so for a spring force we can simply say uh, with this example that f prime is a generalized force and uh, x prime is a generalized coordinate without even bothering about whether the spring has been stretched beyond its length or compressed below its length irrespective of that this will remain the generalized force and this will become the generalized coordinate because that is what we found with the compressed spring example ok so that is the interesting part so the sign basically is to reverse the direction of the force and that is what uh, it eventually tried to do the same thing can also be done uh, with uh, this example so suppose uh, you take an example where um, the pressure here is lower so it, it eventually uh, the, uh, the direction in which this pressure tries to push if P1 is there the P1 tries to push the piston outwards and it tries to increase V1 and therefore minus P1 became the uh, generalized force uh, in this particular case the force tried to increase X1 so minus X so whenever the generalized force is trying to increase the generalized coordinate the negative of that ends up becoming the uh, generalized force and uh, in, in this case uh, where the generalized force is naturally trying to decrease the x prime 
it uh, happens to be the generalized force. So the uh, sign of the generalized force is naturally determined by using this group of uh, inequalities and equalities as we have shown in this uh, PowerPoint slide. Let us come back to the PowerPoint slide. Um, yes. So, we will say that when uh, dx prime is greater than 0, f prime less than f double prime, dx prime less than 0, f prime greater than f double prime, and dx prime equal to 0, f prime equal to f double prime will mean f prime is the generalized force and x prime is the generalized coordinate. And when this format is not respected, you can actually forget about the dx double prime part, which is an external one. So, if you uh, look at this, if you uh, if you are able to respect the two inequalities being opposite to each other in the way the convention is written, then f prime, which is on the left hand side of this, becomes a generalized force to this x prime, which is the generalized coordinate. So, dx prime is a change in generalized coordinate, x prime is the generalized coordinate. So, f prime and x prime form a pair of generalized force and generalized coordinate. Okay. Is that clear? So, we have done that with multiple uh, examples. We can also do that with the electrical system example. Let me go back and uh, do that also and then we can come back uh, and summarize this. So, let us go to the whiteboard again. So, let us take um, the electrical system of, let us simply take only the battery who has an internal voltage V1 and let us say a charge to E1 okay? and then it is connected to an external source let us say, uh, we use the prime and double prime notation, then uh, what will happen is this becomes V prime and this is QE prime, QE prime and V prime and the external voltage applied is V double prime. So, now what happens? If the external voltage applied is more than V prime, then the charge will flow into the battery and QE prime will increase. Okay. So, B QE prime is greater than 0 when V prime is less than V double prime. Okay. If the internal voltage is smaller than the external voltage or the external voltage is higher, then there will be charging and therefore, the DQE prime will increase, the QE prime will increase and the DQE prime will be positive. And if the external voltage is less, then the battery will discharge. So, you will have DQE prime is negative when there is a discharge process that is V prime is greater than V double prime and uh, equal to 0 when this is equal, V q E prime is equal to 0 when V prime is equal to V double prime. So, now you can see very clearly that uh, the, the inequality naturally comes opposite to each other. So, the generalized coordinate for this case is Q E prime which is the charge and the generalized force is V E or V 1 or V prime, which is the voltage. Is that clear? So, there is no uh, requirement of uh, reversal of uh, signs or anything like that kind in this particular case. So, we have this. So, now let us go back to the PowerPoint presentation and uh, try to continue with um, the discussion. So, uh, from whatever we have uh, done so far, we find that um, we can identify in the earlier case the spring force as the generalized force for the uh, generalized coordinate which is the length of the spring. Similar examples for battery and piston that we have taken so far. So, we can actually get uh, similar uh, pairs of generalized force, generalized coordinate combinations. So, for springs, you have the spring force as generalized force and uh, the spring length as a generalized coordinate. For the cylinder piston, we have the negative of the pressure as a generalized force and uh, volume as a generalized coordinate. For battery, the voltage is the generalized force and the charge is the generalized coordinate. We demonstrated this. In the same way, we can demonstrate for a soap bubble. So, suppose let us say we have a, uh, let us say a, a loop inside which there is a soap bubble and one of the ends of the loop is movable. So, let us go back to the board and explain what I am talking about. Uh, yes. Okay. So, suppose I have three sides of uh, loop which are like this and there is a fourth side which is separately movable and between this there is a 
soap film and I move this this way then the soap film is stretched and its area increases okay so this is something and if I move it this way then the soap spring is reduced and its area decreases so this is basically what I was going to talk about so if I come back to the uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation then for a soap bubble surface tension is a generalized force and the surface area is a generalized coordinate so if I uh, increase the surface area or decrease the surface area, surface area that uh, naturally has a restoring force in the surface tension so if I increase the area the surface tension will try to pull it back and therefore it has a positive uh, relationship so you can actually write this in the same way if dA is positive what happens to surface tension dA is negative what happens to surface tension dA is equal then that is equilibrium so external force and the restoring force which is the surface tension will have a balance in the same way uh, if I have a substance which can be magnetized by putting it in a magnetic field then the magnetic field strength becomes a generalized force and the magnetic moment that is induced in the object which tries to normally oppose the magnetic field is the generalized coordinate so this we can write for multiple pairs of uh, systems of the kind that we actually have talked about okay. so we will uh, uh, pause this uh, lecture here uh, because in the next class we will basically be talking about interaction by contact and uh, we will be actually talking about the generalized definition of uh, work so we will uh, stop this class at this point and uh, come back again in the next lecture we will stop here